Games Gaming Historians, and welcome to Lord of Lore, where we break down the lore and history of our favorite games and fantasies. Today, we're going to look into the world of Dragon's Dogma to discuss one of the most defining aspects of Dragon's Dogma's lore, and that is the Dragon's Bargain. While the dragons are famous for their destruction and godlike power, many scholars have wondered about the purpose behind the dragon's attacks, paying special attention to the fact that the dragon seemed to be awaiting something. Now, players who have finished the game know what this bargain is, but what part does it play in the greater scheme of the universe and its laws? Today, we'll be taking a deeper look into the dragon's bargain, the powers behind it, and what it means for the rest of the in-game world. Now, fair warning, there are spoilers ahead. Let's discuss. To begin, let's take a look at what the dragon's bargain is, and how it relates to the relationship between the Arisen and the dragon. Now, as we know, the Seneschal is the appointed master of creation a servant to the cycle of the rift, using powers of unknown origin. In the Seneschal's eternal quest to select worthy replacements, failed Arisen are sent back to the physical world as dragons in order to seek a new Arisen, devouring their heart and granting them eternal life and great power, which is intended to motivate the new Arisen to increase in strength and resolve. However, as we know, the dragon seeks to motivate the Arisen through more than just their heart. Towards the end of the Arisen's journey, the dragon will steal that fat merchant you most happen to talk The dragon will steal the Arisen's true love, and then offer the hero a choice. If the Arisen is willing to lose their beloved, the dragon will kill their love and leave, allowing the Arisen to claim the wealth and royalty bestowed unto dragon slayers without having to actually risk their own life. As it is obviously pointed out, this is the bargain Duke Edmund made, sacrificing his love, or perhaps even his pawn, Lenore, to the dragon to become Duke. However, only by choosing to save their beloved from the dragon and slaying it can the Arisen truly prove their resolve as a worthy replacement for the Seneschal. Now, this information is well known and pretty straightforward, but there's more to uncover here. What is the power behind the dragon's bargain, and what does it mean for the Arisens that are caught up in the dragon's dogma? As we know, there can be multiple Arisens at the same time. During the player's journey, they meet the Duke, whose youth has been long preserved by his heart, still resting in the dragon Grigori. Then there is the Dragonforged, a unique hero who is likely, if not certainly, the oldest living Arisen in the game. But who is he? We know that he is a very, very old hero, with the very primitive landscape drawing depicting a figure with a hunting spear. And because he crumbles to ash from age after the death of Grigori, we know he too was an Arisen chosen by the same dragon. However, despite obviously refusing the dragon's bargain and fighting Grigori, we know that his spear was broken and he was forced to fight the dragon with his bare fists. This can be seen by his name and his black scaled limbs. Just as using a weapon against a dragon can cause it to be strengthened by the dragon's power, or dragon forged, the dragon forged Arisen's very fists are black and scaled. In the end, however, the Dragon Forged failed to defeat Grigori, likely due to a stalemate, and he then retired to an ancient cave to aid new Arisens. In fact, the player fights their final battle with Grigori in the ruins of a faraway ancient kingdom, and while some believe these ruins are the result of the God King's kingdoms or some other nation ruined by another dragon, some believe this is the kingdom of the Dragon Forged, the nation he failed to save. Regardless, this proves that multiple Arisen can share the same dragon and live with the results of their bargains at the same time. However, where it really gets interesting is the question brought up by the DLC, Dark Arisen. While exploring the island of Bitterblack, we not only meet another living Arisen who lives regardless of Grigori's fate, a man known as Beric, but they also meet the dark figure known as Daemon, the corrupted foreman of Arisen whose bargain ended drastically different from the known bargains of other Arisen. In fact, Damon's very purpose in Bitterblack is to attract Arisen to his labyrinth of monsters, killing them and trapping their souls forever within its dark halls. And throughout the game, the player meets dozen of Arisen souls who have fallen for this trap. But what does this mean for other Arisens? How many Arisens can be present at one time? If Beric is alive and young after the death of Grigori with no physical change, does that mean there can be multiple dragons present in the world at the same time? The answer is, most likely, yes. Now, I know some may disagree. Firstly, in the main game, Grand Soren always refers to one single dragon, and the Ur Dragon is an exception to the rule, a powerful dragon that actually exists between the individual worlds. 
In addition, some might see it getting complicated if multiple Arisens were seeking to replace the Seneschal, especially if all of them remained true to their mission and didn't turn away like the Duke or Beric. However, Beric is unaffected by the fate of Grigori, and it's important to remember that Grant Soren only makes up one single piece of the world. In addition, while Daemon and his island are ancient, it's very likely that the many dead arisen within Bitterblack belong to their own separate dragon. But what does this mean for the dragon's bargain? Well, to answer that, we have to look into the nature of Daemon. Originally a human known as Ash, he traveled alongside the arisen Greta and her pawn Ulra in her quest to defeat the dragon. And during the quest, Ash looked up to Greta as a mother figure and fell in love with Ulra. Though Greta was successful, she failed to defeat the Seneschal and became the next dragon. Tragically, the person she chose as Arisen was Ash himself, and when Ash was forced to make the bargain, he refused to kill either his beloved Aura or his mother Greta, instead swearing to kill the gods themselves for forcing him into such a bargain. In a surprising twist of events, Greta granted him his wish transforming Ash into a monster powerful enough to kill the gods, but sacrificing Aura in the process. Ever since, Ash, as Daemon, has attracted Arisens to Bitterblack in defiance of the gods and the cycle of the Seneschal. This is significant because the dragon's bargain can do more than merely offer riches and royalty. It can grant a person's very wish, even making them powerful enough to kill the gods. If the Seneschal, a being whose only weakness is the God's Bane, has the power to grant mortals the strength needed to kill him and the other gods, then it only reinforces the idea that the Seneschal is using power beyond the Rift by some unknown entity. The fact that the Dragon's Bargain can grant virtually any wish has major implications on the lore of Dragon's Dogma. Not only does it mean that there are likely many dragons across the world, but their power to grant wishes offers limitless possibilities. Have there been other Arisens who have made an alternate bargain? And what could they do with such amazing powers? Until new content comes, we can only theorize, but it's likely that the bargain of the dragon, the dragon's dogma, will have a major impact on any new games, perhaps even introducing a new twist to the grand cycle of Arisen and Dragon. But what do you think? Could we see multiple Arisen competing for the right of Seneschal? Could the old gods have been arisen granted godlike power by the dragon's bargain? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to drop a like and subscribe so my channel can grow. Feel free to comment what you would like to see next, new videos every week. God bless.